Welcome to the Buffed Up American Adversaries podcast. We say that because the Buff Show has collided with the American Adversaries show. Myself, Matt Buff from the Buff Show, and Christopher Hart with me from the American Adversaries radio show. Christopher, good to see you today. Good to see you. Yeah, it's fusion, man. Fusion. Fusion. I said collided, but I like well, it. Just sounds fusion. better. Fusion. Yeah. There you go. Now check this out, guys. You can listen to Chris and everybody at the American Adversaries radio show every Sunday through Friday on AmericanAdversaries.com. And if you're here in Central Florida, 94.9 FM, AM 950, and of course, The Answer Orlando. Same with The Buff Show on Saturdays afternoon afternoon at 3s on the same station, 94.9 FM, AM 950, and of course, on TheBuffShow.com. But this is a fun podcast because we bring both shows together, multiple ideas, and a lot of fun things flowing, and we're broadcasting from the Appeals Law Group studios. So how Scott McGuire Check them out, appealslawgroup.com. If you're a gym owner that got thrown in jail, these guys will help you out <laughs> while they're letting the other criminals out of the street. I'm telling you, <laughs> it's nuts, man. It is nuts. And speaking of nuts, Joe Biden gave his big coronation last night of the Democratic, I mean, the doom and gloom telethon. What did you call it on the radio show? The TDS telethon? The Trump derangement <laughs> syndrome telethon. That's right. <laughs> Amazing time. And, you know, everybody was just happy that he didn't flub around and, and make a mess of himself. But you, what did you say before we got on the air here? You were talking about they loaded him up on B12 or something. I, th- I think somebody, <laughs> yeah, uh, filled him up with some B12, maybe uh, some stiff uh, coffee and uh, uh, some caffeine. Got him up on his feet for a little while. Uh, he did uh, probably one of his better speeches ever because he's never really been, you know, a great campaigner. And... He, of course, was reading directly from a teleprompter. And in this setting, I think it kind of actually helped him a little bit because the teleprompter was directly in front of him. Uh, If you've ever seen a camera like in a newsroom, the teleprompter is directly above, above the lens. So it appears as though the anchor, or in this case Biden, was looking directly at the camera when actually he's looking just above it reading from the teleprompter. You could see him looking to the side a little bit. (laughs) Yeah, but, uh, you know, if he were live, he'd have to be looking back and forth, and he would be interrupted by the audience and things like that. So actually this setting, I think, benefited him a great deal. Well, it's as calm as a setting can get. I mean, there's just a big empty room. Exactly. As I said, he's not a great campaigner. He's not really great in front of an audience especially if he has to think on his feet. So last night was ideal for him. It certainly and, was. And so uh, he, was, he was all right. I mean, the liberal media is, you know, just orgasmic over the speech. <laughs> they are. They're fawning over everything. They think it's as great as, like, Obama 2007, 8, you know. Right. Just- uh, even the uh, Fox hosts uh, uh, last night uh, were, you know, you know, congratulatory, adulatory. And uh, so I guess it was because the expectations weren't all that high to begin with. But once again, it was an ideal setup for him, and he did, he did manage. Of course, he was able to rehearse it and, and everything. And supposedly it was live. I'm not convinced it was live, but supposedly it was live. I'm still not convinced it was live either. I mean, he walked out the building later, but you've seen videos in the past where oh, yeah. they show you somebody and then they walk out on stage, but the video was right. shot earlier. Uh, exactly. I mean, I never seen anybody so disciplined, and I just I'd love to be a fly on the wall when they're doing the coaching for this. Right. Don't look to your left. Don't look to your right. You just read the words, and he even flubbed them. Still, <laughs> he even made some some subtle flubs, what, 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 like what, only Biden can. What, what did he say? Uh, we can all, if we all work together, we can do nothing. Yeah, Something we can like achieve the, nothing if we all work together. <laughs> we can achieve nothing if we all work together. Uh, well, that that's, just sums up government, right? Uh, there. I think it pretty much does. Uh, but uh, it was the culmination, of course, of the convention, and it was meant to show him as though he could handle the job, right? But the problem with Biden is he thinks that angry equals tough, right, in everybody's mind. If they see him, he's angry and he's mad, that that's somehow tough and that's good. And eh, not necessarily. Uh, not when, when you're that old. Uh, yeah, and, and especially because he's, he's such a politician, you know, and it comes off as fake. And some of the overnight polling indicates this. So the, the Biden bump actually went to Trump 
Yeah, did you see the Rasmussen numbers? Yeah, the Biden Trump bump went to Trump. percent <laughs> Yeah, uh, it started when they announced the the the, uh, the choice of Senator Harris as his running mate, and then as the convention went along, the bump was going to Trump. So it it shows you that the approach that the Democrats were taking wasn't selling, wasn't going over, as they say in the business. Well, it was depressing. But uh, they did have, I, I do think, a plan, and I think that they accomplished their plan. And here's what I mean by that. Uh, it, uh, the first few days, uh, we called it like the grumpy old men and women and AOC, right? Because <laughs> uh, you, you had Clinton, you had John Kerry, you had Jimmy Carter, I mean, they brought out all the old guard, all the old farts, right? Yes. And what they all do? Just the TDS, Trump Derangement Syndrome Telethon. All they did was bemoan Trump, right? Trump this, Trump that. Can't do this. Didn't do that. Uh, killed these people. Those people died all because of Donald Trump. You know, every ill in the world was laid at the feet of one Donald J. Trump. Can't pay your light bill. Come here illegally and get deported. Can't do, yeah, can't pay your car payment. Trump's fault. Everything was Trump's fault. And it took him, Chris, when the convention started, it took him 30 minutes to even mention Joe Biden's name. Uh, I well, bet Trump will introduce himself, but go ahead on well, that. How about, uh, how about uh, Michelle Obama not even mentioning at all Kamala Harris? Well, apparently she Can, recorded did that. Did I say that right? Kamala Harris. <laughs> Kamala. Everybody's it's scared Ka of No, it's Kamala. you got to say it like the punctuation mark. Oh. Okay. Kamala now you Harris. got me confused. Uh, that's why I like to say Senator. Let's just say Senator Harris. Uh, Good thing it's not maybe that's why Michelle didn't name. mention her name because <laughs> how the hell you say a damn name? All right, so <laughs> it is. Uh, so, so, so the the convention was all about making the election pretty much entirely about Donald Trump. I think we've talked on these podcasts before how we've been saying on the American Adversaries Radio Show ever since we started September fifth. 2010, coming up on our 10-year anniversary. The big here. anniversary. That's right. That very night, uh, I said two things that kind of went over, and we've, we've gone back to them over and over again. Actually, three, I suppose. Uh, one was, and this was the tease, this was in our promos leading up to our first show, that if Barack Obama were in the studio with us that night, I would give him a kiss on the lips. <laughs> no tongues, mind you, but I'd drink him over and give him a big old kiss right on the lips. And the reason being is that he was going to take the country too far to the left, and it would result in a pushback to the right. Uh, we, we thought it would happen in 2012, and thank God it didn't. But look what happened. And Trump has been saying this himself. He, he said this the other night, as a matter of fact, in response to uh, Barack Obama. He said, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for you. You're exactly right. He said that at the press conference yes. this week. The Daily Briefing uh, Trump. Not my favorite Trump, Daily Briefing Trump. I like energetic. Yeah, he's a little Trump. more laid back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he's trying to purvey, like, guys, we're on top Show both of sides. This. Yeah. But he said exactly what you just said. He goes, if Obama and Biden did a good job, if they did the right thing by Americans, I wouldn't be here. He's absolutely right. And that's something you said 10 years ago that yep. that's coming. Yep. You, in a word, Chris, you prophesied Trump without, without knowing, knowing who it was going to be. Without knowing who's going right. to be. Exactly. The syndrome right. is what we're talking about. The right. syndrome of far left politics from uh, uh, Bi um, Joe Biden and Barack, right. Barack Hussein Obama right. were uh, absolutely so divisive, tore the country down the middle, and pissed off the silent majority like they've never been pissed off before. And what are they doing right now? The same damn thing. Only now we have a face on it, okay? That face being Donald Trump. Right. But back then it was just them tearing apart the nation, them against the Republicans, right? But now Donald Trump is the focus of all evil in the world. And another thing we said on that first show was that politics is a lot like professional wrestling, okay? You got the... It, it all wraps around drama, created drama, okay, built around the battle between good and evil, good versus evil. This is the most basic of the most uh, emotions that we have, okay? You have love, you have hate. All of those things are wrapped in and around good versus evil, right? You love what is good, you hate what is evil. Uh, and, and so... It is a situation where they've made Donald Trump all that is evil in the world, you know, and 
But Chris, they overdid it. He, they exactly. They overdid it to right. where it looked like a, a Saturday Night Live telethon well, to a point where it was almost ridiculous. Come on, guys, everything's n- Trump's fault. Not only did they overdo it, but they are working against the guy who knows how to do it to them. <laughs> right. You see what I'm saying? This is how Trump won against Hillary Clinton. Lock her up. Lock her up. Build the wall. These were all emotionally based policies that were in some form or another wrapped around that good versus evil, right? We want to keep evil out of our country. Now, the good people can come, but we want the evil to stay out. Hillary Clinton was a villain, and he pointed her out to be a villain, and he's doing the same thing right now with these folks, and their villainous ways is wrapped in and around socialism. Well, here's something brilliant uh, the president has done. Now, in our next segment, we're going to go, I want to go one by one, some of these speakers that we saw at the DNC, and we want to get into them. But before we head to break, I want to tell you this real quick. This is so cool what happened, and a lot of you guys might not have noticed this. President Trump did a uh, campaign stop in Scranton, um, Pennsylvania, all right, Um, just outside of there. That's Biden's supposed hometown, the same day that Biden's big speech, right? Yes. Today, Trump did another speech where he just line by line outlined accomplishments and basically saying this doom and gloom scenario that they painted isn't real. And then, and then he said the most brilliant thing today. He said, Joe Biden hasn't been to Scranton in seven decades, <laughs> and he calls it his hometown. But the place where he is, lives now he won't leave. <laughs> it was brilliant. But the point is, when they were showing Biden's speech last night, when they were dissecting it, like on Laura Ingram and all the other places, guess what they were also showing? It's things Trump's speech were saying. And today, the day after, Biden just put, he went all in on the greatest speech of his life, but there was Trump right there with him. They, on Fox and Friends this morning, brought in the lady who does the dials, see how the right. reaction is. Yep. She wasn't just doing Biden's speech, she was doing Trump's speech too. He injected himself into the entire process. Biden's great at night, greatest night he probably ever had as a speech, and Trump was right there with him. That's what I say. See, he knows how to play politics. I just okay? play, yeah. And I don't know if maybe his being in the WWE Hall of Fame has anything to do with it. You're damn but, right it does. But he <laughs> understands, see, and, and great communicators understand this. Yeah. And, and that is you reach into a person's soul and you bring out those deep emotions And you make a connection. And this is what the Democrats have been so very good at over the years. And they tried to do it again this time around. Let's talk about more about that when we come back. And I'll tell you why so much doom and gloom and why so little on policy this time. Absolutely. You stay right with us right here on the Buffed Up American Adversary Show. Action Plus Pressure Cleaning is the official pressure washing company of The Buff Show. While Matt's doing the dirty work on the show, Action Plus Pressure Washing has been doing the dirty work for the last 15 years in Central Florida. They use a soft wash system to clean pool enclosures, driveways, pool decks, houses, and commercial property. They even clean large and small parking lots and buildings. Wow! Action Plus offers other services such as lawn maintenance, one-time service to weekly service, mowing, weeding, edging, and trimming, and hauling away debris. You can get more than one service, and they offer bundle pricing. Check out their weekly, bi-weekly, and monthly services for lawn maintenance and ask about their free standard two-driveway with house wash services. Family-owned and operated, get your free estimate at actionpluspressurecleaning.com or call 386-506-1048. That's 386-506-1048. Action Plus Pressure Cleaning. They aim to please. Welcome back to the Buffed Up American Adversary Show Host Matt Buff, along with Christopher Hart, my co-host. Or am I your co-host? How does it work when you fusion? You were talking about the fusion. <laughs> it's the fusion of the two, ladies and gentlemen. It's so awesome. But we want to get into a lot more of what we were talking about in the first segment. But I, I have my uh, something you haven't been hearing out there is my three amigos. All right? all right. Now, this was from the convention, right? The convention. All right. The I, Democrat I, Dullvention. Yeah. The, the TDS, the TDS telethon. telethon. It looked like a terrible telethon. When I was talking to the Trump campaign earlier today, I was like, guys, come on. we got to do better in a telethon. I don't care if you put 10 people in the crowd. It'll be better. Oh, yeah. There's something about reaction that makes the difference. But my three amigos from the convention 
were Andrew Cuomo, Bill Clinton, and John Kerry. Now, if we spent time fact-checking anybody from this convention, it'd be 80% BS. Right. But these guys stood out to me in a very specific way. John Kerry, let's take him first. One of the worst authors of foreign policy I've ever seen in my life. I mean, him... Uh, Hillary and uh, Barack Obama, they were there when ISIS was created. And the Middle East, uh, the Euro, uh, the Arab Spring, all this stuff was falling apart, falling to pieces. Syria, Turkey, uh, uh, North Korea was on the verge of just destroying everybody if they could. All this happened under them. But John Kerry said during the convention that the Obama administration created peace in the world and destroyed ISIS. <laughs> He said that. Uh, it, it, well, uh, when you have an accommodative media, you can get away with saying things like that, and the other side will hold you to it, but the media won't. It's just that was one of the out of the whole convention that really stood out to me as the biggest and boldest lie. I mean, during while Kerry was in there, people were watching beheadings on sandy beaches. They were watching the takeover, the most sickest thing. Michelle Obama had the sign, bring back our girls. I mean, it was just all this stuff. It was depressing how evil and awful it was. And he's saying they destroyed. They didn't do that. They no. didn't build that. No. So that was John Kerry. Then we go to Bill Clinton. I'm saying Cuomo for last. All right. But uh, Bill Clinton, um, when he's talking about the dignity of the Oval Office, <laughs> you lose all credibility, my uh, friend. Uh, I think we so. We all know that. So what... Did you watch the Bill Clinton speech? Uh, I watched a little bit of it. Yeah, yeah. it was. Uh, yeah, it was sort of classic Clinton, but <laughs> you know, you could tell his 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 days were beyond him. But uh, you know, the grumpy old men in AOC is what we were calling it. Yeah, the grumpy old men in AOC. Yeah, and Clinton. then you then you had Cuomo. Yeah, uh, well, Clinton. I mean, for crying out loud, while he was talking, p pictures of from him and Epstein Island were coming out. Yeah, there's more dirt on Clinton than we'll ever know about. But he's talking about dignity of the Oval Office. Give me a break, says Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> and then finally, the the kingpin of the the leader of my uh, three amigos is Andrew Cuomo who goes on there and calls COVID-19 not a disease, but more of a symptom of somebody like Donald Trump. So it's like Donald Trump was in this basement creating this thing and he unleashed called it, it. He called it also the European virus. The European virus. He called right. it that too, right. but then right. Trump made it worse. And he said Trump didn't do anything for New Yorkers, which was just astounding to me. There was... Times where uh, Cuomo was doing his depressing daily briefings from New York, and he's behind him is stacks and stacks of ventilators. All right. And then Donald Trump said, what do you need? They gave him money, PPE, ventilators. They had c companies that weren't even making ventilators create ventilators. And then he sent him the equivalent of a battleship that's meant to be a hospital. And Cuomo didn't even use it. We sent him whoever sends a state a whole ship. The comfort. He sent him everything he wanted and more and said Trump didn't do nothing. Those three amigos stood out as the biggest lies. Everybody else was about empathy, but those guys tried to talk policy, and it was a big joke to me, Chris. Uh, well, you know, they are the great deceivers. Oh, right? oh, yes. They are the deceivers because they lie and they cheat and they steal. All right? And in this case, they're lying and cheating and stealing about ideas and about accomplishments. Uh, everything bad in the world right now is caused by Donald Trump because he's been president. But everything good that's happening in the world right now is because of Barack Obama because he was president. How do you figure that? <laughs> How does that play? You're, you're right. So this is, once again, it's, it's like professional wrestling. Another angle in professional wrestling that's similar to politics is that the media – plays the role of wrestling announcers, okay? If you watch WWE or the other networks, I mean the other federations, who, who welcomes you to the show? The wrestlers? No, it's the announcers. Who tells you who's who? The wrestlers? No, they act it out, but it's the announcers. Who describes the action? The announcers. And the media plays that role. And in that role comes defining who's the good guy and who's the bad guy, right? Right. It's not about journalism. It's about playing a role. And that role is the announcer it, to describe the action 
and to define who are the good guys and the bad guys, right? And as long as you have people willing to play along, it works fine. And Republicans have been more than willing to play along, and it worked fine. And along comes Donald J. Trump, and he upsets the apple cart for everybody. This is why you have a lot of Republican never-Trumpers out there hate his guts. Not necessarily because they disagree with his policies, but they disagree with the fact that he's exposing the game. Okay? In Washington, D.C., they call it the joke. Okay? If you come to town and you're too serious, Jimmy Carter never got it. Jimmy Carter never got the joke. Okay? And in Washington, D.C., they called him and his, co his compadres and his brother and all of them hillbillies. Right. The peanut farmer hillbillies. Right. And because Jimmy Carter actually believed what he said. <laughs> right? And uh, same thing kind of with Barack Obama. You know, he didn't really get the joke, but he was good enough at what he did that the people who did get the joke didn't mind. And they knew that he was so liberal that it didn't matter if he got the joke or not. What is the joke? That they're getting over on us. They're, they're making stooges out of all of us. Democrats, Republicans, independents, all alike. Did you see the angry letter that 77 former swamp creature Republicans wrote? I mean, they're so mad at Donald Trump right now. Yeah, because he's upsetting the apple cart. He's, he's, he's screwing up the gravy train. I'm, he's screwing it yeah. up for all of them. This yeah. stuff with the Ukraine and stuff, money laundering around the world. I mean, we could to do a whole number of podcasts on that. I mean, we will along the way as the more yeah. of these things are exposed. But what here's what happens in Congress, okay? They pass a bill, you know, a, a budget bill, and it's got some foreign aid in it, okay? Let's say it's got $500 million worth of foreign aid going to countries who, uh, let's just say, fight AIDS, okay? And so they send the aid to the countries fighting AIDS, no pun intended, and somehow, some way, some of it finds it back, way back to them, to them, to the legislators, and not all of them, but enough of them, Democrat and Republican alike, get in on the gravy train. Hey, look at look at our boy uh, old Schmidt Romney. You know, old Schmidt. You know, his his son is just like Hunter Biden. You know, they play around in that foreign did, currency, did, foreign aid market. Didn't he work at the same Burisma company as Hunter Biden? Here's one that ought to piss you off, really piss you off, if you're a conservative. On June. The 29th, I think it was, the Supreme Court released a decision that was, was against uh, uh, people's choice. Yeah. All right? That's George Soros' main foundation, okay, where he does charitable work around the world. And one of the things he does is he fights AIDS. Okay? And so guess where he gets some of the money to fight AIDS? From Africa. No. Where From does source. he get the money? Oh. <laughs> Where do you think he gets money to fight AIDS and his foundation? A big government that's got a lot of resources here in the world. The United States of America. Yes. We give money to George Soros. Can you believe that shit? How in the I, hell does this I happen? I didn't even think about that because I thought it was mostly donations from people, but from the government itself is ridiculous because look, there's no reason look, to give any money to Soros. Look, the, the guy is, is, is a sinister Clever, sinisterly clever mind, all right? And then when you have stupid idiots like American citizens who can't really pay attention or keep up with what our politicians are doing with our money, not their money, our money, okay, they can hide all this stuff. Now, in this particular case, the case wasn't about him giving money back to legislators. What the case was about was he was taking the money, and Congress had put a string attached to the money, that if you take money from the U.S. government to fight AIDS, you also have to fight trial, uh, uh, human trafficking and prostitution. And he said, no, I ain't going to do that. Matter of fact, I'm going to make it possible so that prostitutes can still do their work without getting AIDS. And so it was taken to court, and he lost. Okay, but here's the screwy part about it. That's just one instance. Now think about the hundreds and millions and billions of dollars that are going out in all directions. And it does find its way back here. Oddly enough, just look at Hunter Biden, right? He's a prime example. Let's yeah. take Yeah, absolutely. But when we come back, we want to talk about Hunter's dad and the light. What light is he talking about? Right. Stay with us and we'll tell you all about it right here on the Buffed Up American Adversaries Show. Be right back. 
Since 2012, Cellular Tronics has been providing Central Florida with the best phone repair and electronics repair. We fix all electronics from iPhone, Samsung, Sony, and many more. We also do TV repair and fix your tablets. Right now, you can get a glass back cover for the iPhone 8 to an iPhone X for only $95. iPhone 11 and up, back covers are only $120. We have two locations to serve you in Sanford and DeBerry. Visit Cellulartronics.com or call 407-302-3396. That's Cellulartronics.com or 407-302-3396. Welcome back to the Buffed Up American Adversaries podcast. Matt Buff, your host, with Christopher Hart here today, and we're just burning through this convention. We're tearing this convention a new one. <laughs> well, let's just say we're explaining it. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're giving you the, the summary. We watched it so you don't have to. Yeah. But um, here's, here's the thing, and we're going to get into the light here, but no one in this convention mentioned violence, Antifa, looting, burning, or China. And there's a reason they didn't do that, because that's how they control the masses. But uh, Joe Biden, and then also John Kasich said, no way Biden turned sharp left. Um, and then Bernie Sanders said he better turn sharp left. We're going to talk about the tug of war in the party later. But uh, Biden kept talking talking about the light he's not mentioning the real problems in democratic cities over 20 of them not to mention the cities that aren't burning that have just massive overwhelming democratic uh, policies that are completely holding the city down nobody's talking about that but he keeps talking about the light and he said the light about four different times during the speech and for me i was like well what do you mean the light is it because you're so old and you want to follow the light is it because you've been hiding in your basement <laughs> and it's nice to see some light I mean, what is it? And is it because he's the darkness in his head? He wants us to see the light. Earlier in the show, you talked about good versus evil, right versus wrong. If you're trying to move America to the Davos situation that we talked about before, a complete socialist system, if you're trying to not look at violence and looting and burning as a bad thing, that's evil. That's the darkness. So why are you trying to bring us into the light when you're happy living in the darkness because they're the great deceivers you see and that's what socialism is it's it's a it's a deception it promises everything and delivers nothing it, but misery and death and pain if you don't believe me just look at every example of socialism around the world and by the way everything that AOC promised uh, in her little one minute speech where she <laughs> seconded the nomination of Bernard Sanders uh, <laughs> and everything Bernie Sanders talks about Bernard. free college yeah. livable wage housing all of this stuff every bit of that comes directly from the Constitution of the Soviet Union <laughs> right all right, this is it's communist, it's socialism, right? But look, is the Soviet Union even still around? No, it's gone. Right, Glasnost. And, and when it was around, was it looked at as a, you know the, the place where everybody wanted to go and live? No, or did they people hate try it. to get the hell out of there? Yeah. All right, so that ought to tell you something, right? And by the way, they were well funded. They had everything that they needed. If it was going to succeed, it had its best chance. And then what did China do in order to get where China is today? Is China, what their, is their economy and what they're at right there today, is it entirely socialistic? They had their worst economy in 67 right, no, but, years. But, but, but it's set up. Yeah. It's fascist. It is. Okay? Basically, you can own businesses in China, but you have to do what the government, the Communist Party, tells you to do. And by the way, just today... And this is August 21st, I want to make sure, okay? August 21st, 2020, the Communist Party newspaper in Beijing endorsed for President of the United States, Joseph, Joe Biden! Joseph R. Biden! Biden that's right, Joseph and Trump R. Trump talked about that today, and he made a joke about that. He goes, you really think China is going to endorse Trump when I've taken billions from him? i got to get to something you said, though, and I want the audience to hear this. Um... When, when you talked about AOC's wish list, okay, when you talked about all those things with the free college and all that stuff, if you go to the Joe Biden website and look at the Bernie Sanders Joe Biden manifesto, all these things that you listed off, Chris, it's not BS. It's in writing on their website. Everything you said. We're not just saying maybe some of this stuff will be in there. Maybe they'll adopt these socialist policies. It is on. You can print it out 
at home and read it for yourself. Indeed, you can. So, and, and you mentioned the the uh, what you didn't use the word, but the Great Reset a minute ago. So, I want to tie all this together. First, back, first back to the light versus the dark. Yes. and you hit it on yourself. That's good versus evil. Yeah, right. It, it, this is it's biblical, and in, in the Bible, light is good. The angels come in light, and and darkness is is evil. And so, he, once again, he's making see. This is the good versus evil, you know, and he's reaching down for that emotion. And all the analysts said, oh, what a great emotion. The empathy. Yeah, the empathy. These are all emotional terms, you see. Yeah. Once again, he's trying to make that emotional connection, and he's just you know, he's not very good at it. As I said, though, last night he was in an ideal situation for him, all by himself, reading directly from a teleprompter directly in front of him, having rehearsed it numerous times, shot full of B-12 and God knows what else. So the situation was ideal, and who knows if it was live or not. You cracked me up with the B-12. <laughs> I didn't even think about the vitamin C aspect. Of the look, look, my, so my, let me tell you something. This, I'm, <laughs> honest to God, serious. Honest to God, serious. My mother died of Alzheimer's disease. Okay, well, complications from Alzheimer's disease. Right. Okay? And... The odd thing was, uh, about once a month, when she was in a nursing home, they would give her an injection of vitamin B12. And it, would, it wouldn't bring her entirely back, but she would be more lucid and more active and more like a regular human being during those you know, few days afterwards. And I tried to get them to use it more, but, you know, it's a nursing home. Right. So it is a... Uh, uh, an effective tool, let's just say. Well, he did look different. <laughs> he did. So anyway, the, the, reset. It, the, the whole convention was to set up the election. And the election is to set up the Great Reset. We've talked about the Great Reset before. And you can go on to the, if, unless they've pulled it down, but I think we have it on now on our website. We the have World it. Economic Forum, okay, this past June actually did hold a forum and via Zooming and what whatnot, but they have come up with this notion that they're going to use the COVID-19, Wuhan flu, Chinese virus, European virus. The Kung flu. In order to bring about dramatic change that they could not otherwise do. It's the old Rahm Emanuel thing, which is never let a crisis go to waste. And no, nobody ever says the tail end of that statement, which is so that you can accomplish things, do things you couldn't otherwise do. A mass control. Right. Exactly. And that's what we're undergoing right now. Mm -hmm. They've implemented it. And by the way, if you want to see the result of their policies, look no further than New York or New York City. I mean, New York City is a ghost town. The businesses are closing. They're leaving. They're not coming. You even had subways. Subways closing in New York City. I saw that this morning. Yeah, because there's nobody going to the towers. There's nobody working. There's no tourism there. Broadway, they think they're going to come back next year, but if nobody comes to watch the plays, you know, how can you run Broadway? And New York said, we only had one COVID death today. Right. Nobody's left. Yeah. They, <laughs> and by the way, the numbers attributed to the, the Cuomo nursing home policy continue to rise. Yes. For a while, it was thought to be 6,000. From him sending dying COVID-19 patients back into nursing homes so that they could transmit the disease to others in there, you know, Thousands and, and thousands and, of deaths. And now, in now they say it's at least eleven thousand, maybe more. Okay, and we and in no other state has even seen that many. Right, right. One one good side effect though for the for Cuomo is that uh, now he doesn't have to pay for them to be in those nursing homes. Think about that for a minute, ladies and gentlemen. New York is broke, a high, a, a very high expense uh, for any state budget is Medicaid. Most people in nursing homes are there, paid for by Medicaid. So if you take rid of, you get rid of some of those patients, you don't have to pay the nursing homes we have anymore. Some more funding in the coffers. Yeah, I don't have any evidence of that. But why else would you send deathly sick people back to a nursing home with a disease that would infect others in a nursing home, including, by the way, the healthcare workers? And yet they want to tell us that they care about everybody. That is what they have in store for That's us. That's why the empathy is phony. Right. It's more about control. Right. It's all about the good versus evil. You see, if you have empathy, you are good. If you wear a mask, you are good. Yeah. If you don't have empathy, you are bad. Or, let me put it this way, if they say you don't have empathy, you are bad. Okay? Because and Donald, they said that a lot. I, I'm here to tell you, Donald Trump has more empathy in his little finger than all them sons of bitches together. 
okay? They have no empathy. They All they have is desire for power. They are the great deceivers. Everything that they say, you can bet that they are trying to deceive you in some way, okay? Now, as far as the, the, the convention itself, as I said, it was to set up the election and not necessarily to set up a Biden victory in the election. Perhaps now it's a good time to take a break. When we come back, I'll tell you why the Democrats are setting it up so that Donald Trump wins the election. And I'll tell you how they want to do it and why they want to do it. And we'll talk about the, f- the phony tug-of-war. It's not really a tug-of-war. Kasich has no pull. John Kasich and Republicans have no pull in their great agenda, but they want to appear no. to have one. No. We'll get in. We're coming back for one more segment, all right? Visit appealslawgroup.com. That's this beautiful studio we're in that we're uh, hosting from in total 4K. That's why you can see the bags under my eyes from staying up and watching the Great Reset every night, the, the, the mini reset at the Democratic Party. So you stay right there back with us. we got a lot more in the final segment right here on the Buffed Up American Adversary Show. We'll be right back. A boring website can make your company look really bad. (laughs) Poor rankings on Google, Yahoo, and Bing means your company does not exist to thousands of monthly searchers. I'm not even on the front page. Come out of hiding with JJC Marketing Solutions and get found to more and more new customers every day. At JJC Marketing Solutions, they offer state-of-the-art website creation, Google SEO, PPC campaigns, and social media marketing that makes your company stand out. No need to go with those national companies that only care about you on the first call jjc marketing is located right here in sanford and the goal is to help businesses like yours succeed get better results call 321-765-7710 or visit them at jjc marketing solutions.com i'm somebody now jjc marketing solutions welcome to the final segment of this weekend's podcast on the buffed up american adversary show Matt Buff, Christopher Hart with you. Uh, we just, we've been covering so much, and we've told you a lot of stuff that you didn't think you knew about what was happening because, number one, you're lucky if you didn't watch it, but the, the fake news isn't going to tell you anything. They're mm-hmm. going to talk about empathy and this, and Michelle Obama was the queen of empathy that night, and it was fake, and it was appalling. Her husband put the kids in cages, not Donald Trump. Well, um, uh, to be fair, that was a staged photograph those kids were not put in those small cages. That's they exactly were pro- what I was going to say. Okay, yeah, all right, <laughs> go, ahead, no, go ahead, Chris, but, take but it. They, they were actually protesting that Obama was separating children from their parents at the border yeah. and putting them behind chain link fences in large compounds. Right. But so this these gr- this group got together. They went to I think it was in Congress somewhere in Washington D.C. and they set up these basically dog kennel cages and put their children in there and took and it was pictures. Fake to protest but they were yeah. protesting the obama era policy <laughs> yes, I, I just wanted to make sure we hit that point. right i don't care if it's me or chris hitting that point but that's the point i was making they the great it wasn't real but her empathy and tears i mean it was a phony they're the great deceivers okay and this whole convention okay was to set up the election. It was all about doom and gloom and predictions of doom and gloom if Donald Trump gets reelected. Yes. Okay. It had nothing to do with the violence in the street going on right now in Democrat cities all over the country. It had nothing to do with China, right? And when, what China has done to us by leashing, unleashing this virus on the world. We've talked about that before. Things are turning better for the United States right now. And by the way, if you go back and compare our podcast to what's going on right now with all the numbers and everything, you will see that we were right on. Yes, we did. And we got into the numbers heavily before the numbers were even being tabulated. Exactly. <laughs> so go check those old podcasts out. Absolutely. Watch our COVID coverage. Right. You'd, be, they, you'd be impressed. You'd think we'd be talking today. You see, they talked n- nothing about the things that they had anything to do with creating the problem. Right. You see, Trump's only mistake in terms of how he reacted to COVID-19, the Chinese virus, is that he listened to his heart instead of his brain. Okay? As I said before, they found his weak spot. His weak spot is he actually loves Americans. He and He loves America. He, he loves does. us. And yeah. he doesn't want us to die. And when he was convinced that he couldn't take the risk that millions of us would die with this new bug, he acquiesced to Democrat proposals, shutting the economy down, 
right, uh, for only two weeks. And then, of course, that two weeks became a month, and then the month became forever. And then, you know, we have to have a vaccine, we got to do this. And, and it became, rather than just flattening the curve, it became you have to stay home to stop the virus, as though you can. As we know now, more people got it at home than they got it out. So it, it's a situation where they are setting up a situation where I don't think they believe Joe Biden can win. Now, I think they think they made that clear, Chris, when you tabulate how much each speaker actually talked about Joe Biden for Barack Obama. What for did example, they talk about? Less than two minutes. What were they talking about, though? They were talking about Trump being evil and the doom and gloom that goes with Trump. OK. And they also talked about the mail in and how he's trying to steal the election and stuff like that. And that's very key. Here's what they're trying to do. The doom and gloom is to set up. Let's just call it a contingency that Trump does win, all right? Let's say they really want Biden to win. I don't think they do. They don't. I think here's what I think they really want, ladies and gentlemen. They want Trump to win, but they want it to be close. They want it to be close kind of like in the sense that it was more in 2000 Bush v. Gore than it was when Trump beat Hillary Clinton. She had the popular vote, but he overwhelmingly won the Electoral College. And I think they would like to see the Electoral College close and Biden still win the popular vote, but Trump win with the Electoral College. And then they're going to raise hell. They're going to raise hell. And Michelle Obama pretty much forecast it. She said, if you think it's bad now, just wait if he gets reelected, right? There are people who are willing and ready to go riot in the streets. What we're seeing in Portland and Seattle and Washington, D.C., they're willing to take on the road everywhere, and they want a good excuse to do it. And here, when I say they, I'm talking about the elite, okay, the, of, of the Democrat Party, the socialists that are in both the politics in our nation and in our corporate business structure. You have communists in boardrooms all across this country, socialists in boardrooms. Just because they sit on the board of a big corporation or the director or the, the CEO doesn't mean that they're a great capitalist. I mean, you can watch the news channels and, and hear the crap. You know, it's all about social justice and all of this stuff. Look at what Goodyear did. Right? Goodyear said, oh, you can wear a Black Lives Matter apparel and work, work at Goodyear, but you can't wear Blue Lives Matter, and you better, damn sure better not wear a MAGA hat. And then they tried to say, well, social justice issues like Black Lives Matter aren't political. It's very political, and it's offensive to a lot of us. Somebody wearing a trans rights shirt at uh, Goodyear, I'm not going to talk to you. That's, that's polarizing issues. But you know what? What Trump did worked. They, they let him wear cop apparel again. Well, Thank you, good work. Yeah, you can now wear Blue Lives Matter <laughs> stuff, I suppose. You can't wear the MAGA hat. Right. But you can't so, wear a Biden hat either, but right. I don't even know if they make so, Biden hats. So, as I said, the elite want to use this crisis, okay? Yeah. But a, a flu crisis, a bug crisis, isn't really big enough, okay? It's enough to get the ball rolling, though, and that's what happened. And now you got the violence in the street, okay? Which let's, they're clearly okay with. Let, let's say they get what they want. Let's say Trump wins, but just barely, okay, and Biden wins the popular vote. Nancy Pelosi retains the House of Representatives, probably going to lose a few seats anyway, but going to retain the House, maybe. And the Senate uh, stays either in the hands of the Republicans or goes tied or goes maybe one seat to the Democrats. That's a far-fetched one. More likely it stays in the hands That's of the danger for us. <laughs> More likely it stays in the hands of the Republicans. You have to understand that the Democrats want the Republicans in certain positions in order to pull off the Great Reset. Okay? And the Great Reset is AOC. It's Bernie Sanders. Everything that they're promising you, that's what the Great Reset is. All right? Free this, free that. Don't worry about the taxes because we're going to take everything we need when we come to it, all right? And by the way, as part of the Great Reset and social justice is, let's say, like say, for instance, uh, I live alone and I live in a house. So they come to me and they say, hey, you're, you live alone and you're living in a house. What? Well, you don't need all that room. Now, don't worry. We're going to take care of you. But you can't live in a house anymore all by yourself. We're, yeah, we're going we're gonna, we're gonna to take your house and we're going to put a family in there. Yeah. But we're going to take you and we're going to we got a dwelling for you. 
Dr. Shivago. That's exactly. That's how socialism works, ladies and gentlemen. If you got anything, they're coming to get it, to spread it around, except for the real rich. Of course, they stay really rich. Well, they have and to it, stay in power. And that's why they want the Great Reset. Gates, Buffett, all these people. Okay, they're the ones behind the Great Reset because they think that this is going to somehow be better for the world. And why? Because then, if they have the Great Reset, then they can control the population not only in behavior, but in how many of us there are. They think there's too many human beings on the face of the planet. If you have somebody in power who thinks there's too many of you, are you really comfortable with that? <laughs> I'm not. And that's why we elected Donald Trump. So they want him to win and then continue the violence into the streets into 2021 and then perhaps have somebody you know, uh, real impeachment go off or, or something like that. So it's a situation where they are prepared for Trump winning. Here's what we need to do. We need to teach him a lesson. We need to win overwhelmingly. Overwhelming victor, victory with Trump. I mean, huge electoral college victory, if not a popular vote victory, but only lose maybe a popular vote by a little bit, and then retake the House, keep the Senate. That would actually do the Democrats a favor. You talked about how they're having internal strife in the Democrat Party. This would be a benefit to those who don't want to go off the deep end with AOC. It would be. We'll have to stay tuned. So winning is good for us. But winning's good for them on the, on the uh, Great let, Reset. Let's just say if we kick their ass and kick it hard, it'll be good for them. It'll be like that old commercial. If you're old as me, you remember the old, uh, I think it was electric shave, uh, aftershave. Or, yeah. uh, or, or it was something like that. They'd slap you and you'd go, oh, thanks, I needed that. Right? Yeah. So they need a slap in the face by the electorate, that is the voters, who say, no, we don't want that. We don't want any part of it. Now, that won't go away entirely, but they'll go back in the closet for a while. Well, that would be good because, number one, we save our country. And sometimes when you're acting bad, you need a spanking. And the Democratic Party needs a spanking right now. That was an embarrassment of a convention. The government can't solve all your problems. And they want to do it, but it's not in your best interest, as we just laid out for you. Now you know more. Matt Buff and Christopher Hart with you. Now check out the AmericanAdversaries.com, all right? If you go there, on the top there, you got the banner up there, and you can go to the Facebook page. It's where you can see live shows, you can see news and information, and then you got our YouTube channel on there with our um, uh, old podcast that Chris and I were talking about. Go ahead, Chris. I was going to say Facebook, American Adversaries on Facebook, too. Did, did I say the Facebook? I th I, you, said the, you said the website. But that's okay. Yeah, but on the website, you can hit that Facebook link. Oh, I'm sorry. And that's yeah. where you see the live shows. Right, okay. Yeah, I said yeah, the yeah. Facebook first. Chris is so excited. Every time he talks about the Great Reset, it gets him so pissed off. And it's but, true. And by the way, these numbers, <laughs> these numbers will tell you something about whether or not Joe Biden's going to get elected. Yeah. Okay. 58% plus of Americans don't think that he would serve out a full term. And 50% plus don't think that Harris is ready to be president. Do you think people that think that are going to vote for these clowns? Absolutely not. That's why AOC didn't even mention Joe Biden's name. No. Nah. Look, this, th this convention was letting the old guard have their final say and introducing the new guard. That's right. That's what they're trying to do. Um, when you look at how little they actually talked about Joe Biden, the commentaries on Fox talked about him more than the convention people did. Yep. He is, what, what did Trump call him? The Trojan horse. Yep. He gets us in the door. Just, and then we put him in the corner. You shut up and play with your blocks. We got it from here. Just remember, those folks, they are the great deceivers. Deceivers. We outlined it specifically. Check out thebuffshow.com. Past interviews, uh, Pam Bondi on there, uh, Roger Stone, things like that. You'll really enjoy that. And uh, our, our live shows are at 3 p.m. on Saturdays, and American Adversaries goes live Sunday through Friday at 5 p.m. All these times are Eastern, okay, guys? So check it out. We'll see you next time. For Matt Buff, Christopher Hart, put on the hat. We forgot the hat. <laughs> there he goes. We'll see you next time. You stay smart out there.